This giant pill-shaped device in my hand is the future of filmmaking. It's a camera from Leica that costs $60,000 but it doesn't even shoot video. It's a LiDAR scanner from Leica Geosystems. LiDAR is one of the newer technologies in filmmaking that you might not have heard of. It's changing how directors plan their shots, how production designers build their sets, how VFX artists create seamless digital set extensions, and a whole lot more. In this video, we're doing a complete breakdown of LiDAR scanning with Leica Geosystems. It's not gonna like shoot me in the face with, it, with the, la <laughs> the laser. What it is, why it works, and why it might be the most important filmmaking tool you're not using yet. Let's get into it. So what do we got here? So this is the BLK nice. to go in its case. You can see how nice discreet case. it is. <laughs> yeah, very <laughs> light. Put that in the backpack yeah. easy. And so we're here in this alley. Let's say we're like location scouting, so we'll do a scan of this alley. Yes. Yeah. Now, before we start our scan, let's cover some basic groundwork. The first one being, what is LiDAR? LiDAR stands for Light Detection and Ranging. Essentially, it's a light pulse that runs through optic lenses that um, spin rapidly, and that light will scatter throughout the nearby area, generating a coordinate point. That is Henry Mountain from Leica Geosystems. He's going to be our LiDAR guide for this video. And you'll notice the first device we're going to look at is not handheld. It's their tripod-mounted entry-level scanner, the BLK360. So LiDAR functions similar to echolocation, but it uses light instead of sound. The LiDAR scanner sends out laser pulses in all directions. So once it hits a surface, that light will bounce back to the device. The scanner calculates distance by measuring how long it takes for each pulse to return back. This happens simultaneously for millions of points in the environment. Essentially, that light pulse generates the distance between the device itself, but it's also measuring the difference between each coordinate point. This creates what's called a point cloud, a three-dimensional coordinate map of the entire environment with millimeter precision. This particular model, the BLK360, can measure up to 680,000 points per second with an accuracy of up to four millimeters. So to perform a scan, you set down your tripod, hit start, and let the scanner go to work. It takes about 20 seconds to perform a scan with the BLK360. Then you move it to a new location, hit scan again, repeat. Each new position adds to the detail of your scanned environment. The bigger the location you need to scan, the more setups you have to do. For an extreme example, take this scan of the La Brea tar pits done with their more high-end scanner that we'll talk about in a minute, the RTC360. This required dozens of scans to fully capture the entire park, but it created this highly accurate digital twin of the La Brea tar pits. But what if you need to do a quick scan for a location scout or capture live set for continuity in between takes and you don't have time to set up the whole tripod and do that whole thing. That's where the blk to go comes in, which we started scanning with at the beginning of this video. What you want is a nice gradual pace. Do I need to like swish around or just kind of keep it you going? Keep, keep it level and a little bit higher um, to okay. get that coverage on the ground. I feel like I keep like wanting to be like, let me just wave my wand, but <laughs> yeah. that's not necessary, right? I can just... It's, yeah. I can just walk straight. You can you walk straight and it will pick up all of the different angles that it can see through that light pulse. The blk to go has a few trade-offs from the tripod-mounted 360. We're basically sacrificing a little bit of detail in order to gain a speed advantage by having it handheld. Inside is still the optic lens uh -huh. rotating. Slightly different technology where this will actually scan as a crosshatch instead of like just a 360 smooth scan. So it's got an IMU, um, inertial measuring unit, which allows it to keep aligned constantly, as well as the Grand Slam, uh, the simultaneous localization and mapping. And what's the field of view that it's getting? So the field of view is 270. So essentially it will cancel out anything oh, directly wild below it. I can see the detail of yes, the, fence the fence already showing up. That's crazy. Yeah. So again, the range is 25 meters. Uh, you can scan outside, inside. You can also scan in the dark. There's no light needed. What happens? Windows, reflections, shiny surfaces. That's always a little bit tricky there, okay. Jerry. So with reflective surfaces, obviously because it's a light pulse, you're going to get a little bit of uh, noisy data of that reflectivity. And they're the main elements of going in, getting that processed with the software and removing those elements from the So data. is that something you go later in the software and if you had some weird scan, that was maybe a window or reflection that you can clean it up. Correct, okay. yes. All right, so quick note about the workflow we're talking about. As you can see, the scanner is connected to the iPad, where we can get a real-time preview of what we're scanning, what we're seeing. You also get the same view if you're using the tripod-mounted 360, and the view updates every time you put the tripod down and perform a new scan. You get an entire picture of your environment in real time. 
From the iPad, we can get precise measurements of the space and do some basic reviewing. It's like having a real-time laser measurement scanner times 100,000. But the scan will be a bit noisy, so after we finish, we would upload the data from the device to Leica's Reality Cloud Studio, where we could do more cleanup, like removing people walking around in the scan, and then export it to whatever format we need to send it to Blender, Unreal Engine, or any other 3D application. You can also just switch uh, hands as well. Uh, you know, okay, if, if it, it doesn't, if after a while holding it up like this, you know, it's a bit of a yeah. strain. You can switch hands. If you're done being like the Statue of Liberty. You can, <laughs> you can change it. Okay. And then now, so if we're going back, and I guess part of the main benefit of the accuracy is it's able to match up the buildings that we just scanned. That's correct. And not yes. have like a drift. Yes, yeah, so with the drift, um, that happens if you walk too far away from your original starting point. So like if I walk around the whole block, you come back here, it's You're going to have gonna a little... bit of a misalignment okay. there. The, the drift of point clouds is, is going to happen. So it's recommended 10 to 15 minute loop around the localized area and then go back to the original spot you started the scan. Okay. Yeah, it's crazy the amount of detail. Like it's picking up the barbed wire up there. No, right. And then, so if I wanted to get, like, let's say we have these trash cans, or if I wanted to get something more detailed, so like I could lower and go can, in and kind of. You can lower and you can go in all the different angles there and, you know, at a, a steady pace. The longer you stay in that area, the more points it will start to pick up. Okay. Uh, therefore, you'll get more information in that end result of a mesh. Okay. Now what we can see is that these are all black and white points right mm -hmm. now, but it is picking up color point data. So okay. you can also generate a texture from those color points. But if you want to scan something bigger, like a building, there is a cool version of the slider scanner that's basically attached to a drone called BLK to fly. And so you can fly it around and scan like we're doing on the ground, but scan buildings. Once you're in the software, if we're like, oh, we need to find out how wide this alley was, we can do measurements or- Do measurements. Oh, okay. That's, Literally, that's cool. as soon as we stop the device here, we can take measurements right on our, oh, we do it right our now. pad here. Okay. Yeah. So like a, a floor plan there to say there was a prop and that space is roughly where we want it to be. We can visually see that straight away. Um, and even better, once this is uh, you know, uploaded to Reality Cloud Studio, you can send this link of the data set to your clients or other fellow uh, colleagues, and they can also take measurements as well. Now, before we go on and talk about their super high-end scanner, the RTC360, you might be wondering about the name, Leica Geosystems, and what it has to do with Leica cameras. Well, quite a bit. Geosystems roots go back over 200 years in land survey and construction. Back to 1819, when Jacob Kern founded a measurement instrument factory in Switzerland. In 1921, they had a big breakthrough when Henrik Wilde created the first portable theodolite, a device for surveying. Throughout the 20th century, they went through a series of mergers and acquisitions, but they continued to innovate, including creating some of the first aerial cameras and developing the lens that shot the Apollo 11 moon landing. In the 90s, they became part of the Leica Group, renaming to Leica Geosystems, but that was short-lived. In 2005, they were acquired by Hexagon, who is still the parent company today. Now, if you notice the trend, it's that their entire history is all about surveying and construction and absolutely nothing to do with media and entertainment. But like a lot of modern tools that we're using in film production today, they realize that their highly accurate scanners could apply to a variety of use cases in film production. With the accuracy of LiDAR it's being able to capture data for sound stages, locations, VR stages, and like the portable theodolite they developed over 100 years ago, their LiDAR scanners have gotten much smaller and much better. Now, coming back to filmmaking, what are some more applications you can do with LiDAR? We already touched on location scouting with our alleyway scan. You can pull accurate measurements from the entire location just by doing a single scan. That also translates to virtual location scouting. The rest of the crew can put on a headset and navigate a real life location in VR. Or they can plan out their shots by loading the environment or the real life scene into something like Unreal Engine, adding some 3D actors and props, and using a virtual camera to block out storyboard their shots. This is something that we're dabbling a lot with our own productions, and it helps speed up the entire process. And as Henry just mentioned, there are a lot of use cases for getting accurate measurements of sound stages and venues. But what if we want to take it up another level and create a digital twin of an existing location to use as a photoreal backdrop on an LED wall, or as a digital set extension for VFX? For that, we'll need their much more powerful scanner, the RTC360. It's not gonna like shoot me in the face with the, with the, <laughs> the laser. The 
quality of laser is about the same as what you would have just scanning some produce, you know. So we've got the RTC 360 here. Uh, so clearly bigger. <laughs> yes, yeah. So it's our most accurate device that we offer, especially in the media and entertainment world. Well, this will definitely be able to capture a lot more as well as the range as well. The accuracy with this device is 1.9 millimeters. And to start a scan, all you need to do is just press play. Okay, so you can hear the optic lens spinning very rapidly. That's just the interaction it's having with the air around it. So uh, you can see it's almost like a, you know, a propeller, right? Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so that's the optic lens spinning around and that light pulse is coming through this area up to the lens and then scattering that light pulse to the nearby surfaces. So the RTC 360 can capture up to 2 million points per second, more than three times as many as the BLK. And as Henry just noted, the accuracy of the RTC 360 nearly doubles to just under two millimeters compared to the BLK's four millimeter accuracy. This accuracy is critical for VFX work or for creating digital twins. Now, while the RTC 360 has three built-in 36 megapixel cameras, they are not nearly high resolution enough to create something that is photorealistic for virtual production. Take this example of the Mystic Seaport, a real-life location that was digitized by global objects for use on a VP stage using their own special process combining LiDAR scanning and photogrammetry with high-resolution cameras. We get into a lot more detail with this and the work Global Objects is doing by creating high-quality digital scans of the real world in our companion video, so go check it out. Now, pricing. They're not inexpensive. You can think of them as the ARRI cameras of LiDAR scanners. The BLK360, their entry-level scanner, starts at $30,000. The handheld blk to go which we noted at the beginning of the video, starts at $60,000. And the high-end RTC360 starts at $100,000. Right now, they're not that common for rental houses to carry, but hopefully that changes in the future, especially as the understanding and benefits of LiDAR become more and more useful across all stages of filmmaking. If you're a full-time location scout, or if you run a VFX shop, or if you're looking to potentially create a new role in film production, purchasing a scanner could make some sense. That's it for this video. Thank you, Leica Geosystems, for demoing all their products and letting me ask a bunch of questions about LiDAR and photogrammetry. For a look at a company that has a whole fleet of Leica LiDAR scanners, check out our companion video with Global Objects, where we not only explore how they're creating highly accurate digital twins of real locations, but how they're pushing the boundaries of Gaussian splats and generative AI with 3D.